Howard Jackson. Anyway, you know, it's actually uh, we go back a long ways in, in the martial art tournaments, also the internationals and so forth. Uh, what a strong warrior! Actually, you know, it, uh, uh, he's a strong warrior inside of his heart as well. is is a physical fighter. I've always uh, admired his his uh, love for what he does and uh, his talent. A very talented warrior. And so I've, I, I was really looking forward to actually competing with him from one warrior to another because I, I re recognize that uh, he's the top of his game and I was the top of my game and I figured that this would be a really truly a physical game of chess to see how well we, we play this uh, game and so when we, when we got into the fight and they asked me, you know, that would I fight him? And I said, oh, this would be a pleasure. It would be a pleasure, it would be an honor to actually uh, compete, you know, with him. And so preparing for it, I've always known, you know, in the art, okay, that uh, he has really quick hands and, and uh, quick legs. And I recognize that, you know, that he's got a good heart and a strong jaw. And so going into the fight, I recognized that, okay, this is, this is going to be a, a truly, uh, not a battle, this is going to be a war. And, and a war, a war of labor of love, you know, because I know he loves the art so much, and he knows I love the art so much, and truly we we're going to test each other's love for what we love doing. And so going, the journey going in, uh, toward the fight, you know, preparing for the fight, I, you know, it was truly exciting. It was exciting, uh, just, uh, it's almost like I couldn't wait to get there, but yet there was uh, the preparation, uh, race and everybody said, well, uh, do you think you win them? And I said, you know what, I'm not looking for the outcome. I'm just looking just for the fact that I can get in the ring, go, you know, and play a physical game of chess with them. So, uh, getting uh, in Vegas and so forth, preparing for the fight, uh, doing sparring, I, everything else, I was so, so into the zone. I was so focused into it. Then when we got there, um, uh, this I think it was at Lake Tahoe, I believe, or, and when we, when we got to the, to the hotel, all the hoopla, it was so much energy. It was electrifying. And so toward the fight, we're, uh, Howard and I we were the, actually the last, the last bout, but getting, usually, I, usually I'm asleep and I'm resting before all the fights. This one, I was up on my feet. I had a lot of adrenaline rush. I was really, so my job was just to relax and just stay in the, just stay in the focus, you know, just relax and stay in focus, not waste no energy whatsoever. And when we get into the ring, I saw it in his eyes, I said, I knew right off the bat, I said, okay, this is definitely going to be uh, a war. It, war. it was not going to be a battle, it was going to be a war, because I can see it in his eyes that he was there, he trained hard, and he meant business, and uh, we were actually going to go out there and, and really test our skills. And I know that, you know, I know that he had no ma bad malice to hurt me. But at the same time, I know he, you know, he was out there to win. And uh, the, after the uh, the first round started, I knew where I was. I said, "Wow, well, he is. Uh, he was very powerful, powerful with his hands, and very quick, and very powerful with the legs." Matter of fact, he hit me with a spinning back kick, and I thought, "Wow!" I said, "That's my kick," and he ended up doing it on me, which uh, was pretty wild. I, and um, I smiled because I knew that. Uh, okay, this this one, you know, Howard man is is actually being very accurate, and uh, he's you know he came here, he's all business, and so within the second round, uh, he was just picking it up. He was, I mean, he was right on his money, man, just hitting targets, man, left and right, and and I knew that I had to pick up the tempo now, and after the third round, hey, okay, after the third round, I realized. This is where I gotta really start to take out my axe and really start chopping deep because uh, 
he was getting stronger. Hey, instead of getting weak, he was getting stronger into the fight. So I knew I had to slow him down. And so I, you know, as, as they say, taking out the axe means chopping the legs, chopping, chopping the body, going, you know, and, and putting more pressure and just staying in the mix with them. Just as they say, tying shoelaces with them. And that's exactly what I did. I just tied shoelaces with them. Uh, I had advantage of boxing because, I, you know, I had boxing. I was boxing professionally, so I had advantage of my hands with them, even though he was good with his hands. But uh, I had more experience. Uh, with boxing and, and the legs, uh, I, I recognized that I had uh, uh, from uh, doing um, Muay Thai kickboxing, especially in the, in the, I was already I was already had a good idea of how to low kicks and so forth. So I was I already knew how to chop him down and slow down his uh, slow down his hands a little bit. Within the fourth round. I, I just knew that it's, it was time. It was time to put the, as they say, put the glaze, you know, glaze them. And just really just stay in the mix and stay with them and, and uh, just trade back and forth and, and, and see how long he can hand that kind of pace. When I, when I picked up the tempo from 1 to 10, I picked it up at a 9 and 10. I knew that, you know, let's see how long he will last at that pace. And it just happened so when I, I hit him with a left hook and I saw him buckle, I just hovered him. I didn't give him a chance to breathe. I just hovered him and uh, because I knew that his heart, that he would, he would recover, but I didn't give him a chance to recover. I just said it's time to just finish it. And I've always knew I was a good finisher. And um, once I knew that that I, I hit, you know, I really, I stunned him. I didn't give him a chance to breathe with it. And I knew that I could finish it right there and then. And so, if they would allow him, and you know what, I believe that if they allowed him to fight, he would still come at me, even though I know he wasn't all in, you know, all in the right place right now. I, I believe that he would still come at me, you know, and uh, still, and still, that's his heart. You know, that's just his heart, you know, that, he was still coming, even though he wasn't all in one place. He would have still come at me, and I'm glad. And I'm glad that they didn't uh, didn't allow him to come in. Not only because he would come out, because I knew that he, I already heard him, and I knew that he wasn't all in one place. And I'm a good finisher, and I knew I would have finished it. And I, I I think maybe I would have felt bad knowing that he wasn't in, a, in all in the right place mentally, because I knew I still had him dazed. But it turned out the way it was supposed to turn out. And after that, he did not stop. He kept on saying, I want a rematch. And I said, I'll give you a rematch. He said, okay, I want a rematch. And matter of fact, we went on the, we went on the Black Belt magazine cover, both of us, because we was. We were going to rematch. And um, I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to the rematch. So was he. It never happened, but it would have been a great it would have been a great uh, show because we would have put on one hell of a show the second time around. I really believe that, you know, that in his heart, that he wanted that comeback. He said, I want that rematch, and I knew what I saw in his eyes. So, Howard, you know, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, you know, you're a great warrior, and I know you're watching, and you know what? I keep you always alive in my heart because you're truly a great warrior, and I really enjoy working with you, enjoyed sparring with you, especially enjoyed uh, the fight with you. Jackson of Denver, Colorado attempts to take the crown from Benny Urquidez. Urquidez of Los Angeles, California has 30 wins, no losses, and two draws in the professional full contact ring. He also holds black belts in karate, judo, and kendo. Ross Scott and Everett Eddy will be fighting for that light, uh, that heavyweight crown. So Gary Bender and Joe Corley were in Las Vegas for the fights. Without further delay, let's pick up action in round number three in that lightweight full contact karate championship. Yes. Round three now. What do you think thus far through the first two rounds? It looks to me like Howard Jackson probably has taken the first couple of rounds. Was that partially blocked? There's a pretty good spinning kick. Yeah, that one was blocked. 
Howard has really got the stamina. It looked to me like he was tiring a little bit last time, but it looks like he's coming back strong now. Good left again. Good solid left hand. Good solid right hand. This would be a major upset if Jackson had pulled this one off. It really could, but Benny's been hit a number of times and been hit hard and, and uh, only been knocked off his feet a couple of times. Rikides has won 25 fights by knockout, so he can right, come back at you. That's right. Again, Jackson on the left of the screen, Rikides on the right, round three of the lightweight championship fight. Rikides is starting to pick his shots a little more. You'll see him sliding away from kicks and staying inside this corner. A really short shot. Shot. fighting machine, and I can understand why, Joe. He being your idiot. He's not in a big hurry right now. He's still laying back, knowing that he's got plenty of time to do what he has to do. Benny looks at this as a job. When he comes in to do his job, he does it in the most effective way that he can. Knows that he has to go nine rounds. I kind of get the impression to do that your kid is kind of has a mean streak in him. No, he really doesn't have a mean streak so much as he has a determined streak. He, uh, he never wants to hurt anybody, but he definitely has a strong winning desire. Oh, hard shot by, by Benny, followed by a, a good slip of Howard's left hand. Look to me like Jackson hanging on just a little bit after that one. Yep, just a little. So round three now with 10 seconds to go. Our Jackson doing very well in the first three rounds of the scheduled nine-rounder. Colorado, there's some talk, should he lose today, he might end his career. I understand uh, there was some talk of that, but Howard says definitely not. Uh, Howard is too much of a winner. If, uh, if he were to lose, he would come right back. There's no question in my mind that he would. Howard's been looking very good up to this point. We began round four of this lightweight championship bout. Through the first three, how do you score? Well... It looks like Jackson took the first two rounds. Number three could have gone either way. I would have given the number three to Benny myself. Because Benny is now picking his shots a little better. Looks like Benny's starting to really pour the pressure on now. Look at your kiddies. He is backing him in. He just won't let him out of there. Yep, he's been holding back, letting Jackson spend a little energy. And now he's going to see if Jackson can stand up under the pressure. Jackson had some of the quickest hands that ever existed in light contact karate, and they seem to be paying off really well for him here today. I'm impressed with his boxing skills. Jackson has done a good job in that phase. Very quick hands. Very quick hands. You can see your PD has great savvy in the ring. He just seems to be complete control. Yeah, it, that experience really pays off. He's had five times the number of fights that Howard Jackson's had, and I think as we go ahead on into the fight that we'll see that that will make a big difference. Well, you know, he's won over there, 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 fight. There, he's in trouble. Gertini's has Jackson hurt, and Tom Schlesinger, the referee, is going to give him an eight count. He really caught him. He really caught him a good left hook and followed up really well with strong hand combinations. There's seven. He's asking him if he wants to fight, and he's called it. He Tom the fight. In the fourth round, and that was kind of an inside punch. Joe. It was a real short left hook that caught him and started. There's the back flip by Benny Rikides. That's what we were telling you about. It was a short left hook that caught him, and then he followed up with some very powerful hand combinations. So Benny Rikides has just won his 31st fight. He successfully defended his lightweight championship and I would say impressively here in the fourth round. And early, it looked like Jackson might be pulling an upset. We had him winning the first two rounds. And here at 126 of the fourth round, it's all over as Benny Urquides has defeated Howard Jackson from Denver, Colorado for the lightweight crown.